After the end of World War I, a man, uh, a Lafayette industrialist, started to get more and more involved in Purdue University. His name was David Ross, and he was quite a wealthy man, very, very successful, and he had several uh, companies, industries, in Lafayette. He started by working on building the Union, raising money for the Union and doing that project. By the, the mid-1920s, he was on the Board of Trustees. Uh, he would eventually leave the leadership positions at his companies and devote his full time and his life to running Purdue University. He would become uh, the longest serving chair of the, of the Board of Trustees and a, a wonderful donor to the university. Uh, in the mid-20s, he thought there needed to be something done uh, added to the university that wasn't there. We had a, an alum named George Aid. George Aid, especially at the beginning of the 20th century, was the most famous playwright in the country. Uh, he lived in Brook. Uh, he was a graduate of Purdue. He was also quite wealthy. David Ross and George Aid miraculously had never met. You would think they would run in the same circles, but they didn't, and they didn't know each other. So David Ross asked a judge in downtown Lafayette to introduce them. And he did, he had him to his office in downtown Lafayette. And he said, you know, Mr. Ross, this is Mr. Aid. And they sat down and they had a wonderful conversation. They were both uh, bachelors and they both were lifelong bachelors. They had a lot in common, although one was an industrialist and the other was a, a writer. Uh, they they had a wonderful time talking with each other. Finally, Ross said, George, why don't you come with me for a little ride and I wanna show you something. Well, Aid was up for anything, so he, they got in the car and they went down Main Street, they went across the bridge into West Lafayette, they went uh, to the university uh, up north on Grand Street, up to Northwestern Avenue, and along Northwestern Avenue at the north edge of the campus at that time, Ross pulled his car over to the side of the road. He said, come with me. Ross still followed them. They went across Northwestern Avenue and they walked on a, a field. It was a vacant field, it was full of uh, brush, uh, it, was, it was very difficult to cross, there was barbed wire, Men in those days wore suits all the time, and they were both wearing suits, and uh, Aide was afraid he was gonna tear his pants on the barbed wire and get all dirty from, from the, the high weeds. And he would say, you know, see here, where are we going, David? Where, where are you taking me? Ross said, just follow me. He finally came to a spot at, at the top of kind of a, a, a depression in the land, and he stood there and he said, George, there it is. And Aide said, there is what? And David Ross said, there, is where we were going to build our football stadium. And that's when I think that, that George Aide said probably the most clueless thing he ever said in his life. He said, and just what does this have to do with me? And Ross informed him, he said, why George, I was thinking you and I would pay for it. Well, Aide actually liked the idea. Aide loved football, he, he went to the games, he was a big advocate of activities for students, and he agreed that the two of them would first buy the land. Well, they couldn't buy the land. It had just been sold to the Shook Agency, uh, which is a new real estate agency in town that had planned to build faculty housing on that, that spot. So that didn't bother Ross. He went and bought the land across the street on Northwestern, and he swapped the Shook Agency, and the Shook Agency took the land across the street, which it developed into the Hills and Dales subdivision, which became a model for uh, building and, and residences in, in the city of West Lafayette. And in the mid-20s, uh, Ross Aid Stadium, as it was named, was dedicated. Ross loved everything about it, and Aid loved everything about it. There was only one thing that bothered Aid. He thought the name wasn't right. He thought the name Ross Aid sounded like some kind of a picnic drink, uh, like lemonade. <laughs>